Hey, howdy, hello. Vinyl shootout night. Vinyl shootout night. Hope you're doing okay. Yeah, it is a vinyl shootout night. We've done so many of these. I just got through listening to one of my favorite, favorite albums of all time. God, it's such a special album. Really appreciate you stopping by. There's some stuff to talk about with the vinyl. Background, some of the band members. We'll talk also personally why, why I just love this album. Share more heart to heart. We're going to chill out. So I hope you're uh, maybe evening glass of tea. As you can see, this is a little close-up cam. It's 3 a.m. And, yeah. We take opportunity like this every year. That's the plan. To go through favorite albums of all time. You know, I started collecting uh, vinyl for each of my favorite albums of each year starting in 2018, really actually starting in 2016, went back and bought just a couple of my favorite albums from the year. Didn't really think anything of it then. More toward 2019. Discovering how much vinyl is out there. Started seeing it pop up more and more just on my radar for whatever reason. More in that time. Instantly started buying favorite albums of each year. Just one. Just thought I'm just going to get one album for each year. And I did finally uh, complete that collection for each year of my life was the goal. Now, obviously the collection has expanded. We've, we've dove further into the audio side of it. And I think all the, the videos on this channel were really just trying to showcase music maybe just under your radar. Maybe you thought, man, there's no good pop music anymore. There's nothing good on the radio. I go to Target. Just trying to get my fresh vegetables. What is this crap playing over that curse you, Pandora? And I'll tell you what, I've had those same thoughts. It's sad. But the good news is you keep digging. And in time, uh, in many hobbies, and, and you discover something just under the radar, something that cuts through the noise. And this album did that for me. Uh, if you've watched the James Blake Assume Form vinyl shootout. Hey, howdy, hello. And I got to tell you about some of these because it really is amazing, the deviation. Plus, it's just cool to check them out. We're going to take a little personal route into this. And I don't have a script. I have, I have notes for what I'm going to talk about with the music. You know, I'm a musician. I've played in bands. There was a time in the YouTube algorithm where if you sort of shuffle played certain artists on YouTube, you know, off the radar, off the beaten path, recommendation and this song loveless came on that this it's been out since 2016 but so it was really in about 2017 that i remember just getting out of the shower drying myself off music was playing in the bathroom nothing crazy uh but thankfully mr algorithm unleashed to me this band it gives good suggestions most of the time, at least back in, in the day, it did. And, and it gave me Low Moon's Loveless, the music video, which I was able to see a glimpse of this amazing particles or something. I just remember the feeling it gave me, it was beautiful. But also that chorus explosion, those two hits, was really refreshing. But there was no album yet, so there's nothing really to dive into. Other bands similar, there's a band called Mansion Air. There's some really cool, I'm going to describe some genres. Chill wave, shoegaze, mixed with indie pop as well. But great to see the music. As Matt said in an interview I just watched today, kind of speak for itself and take character of its own. Uh, NPR did catch wind of them, which was cool. And <laughs> uh, they did a tiny desk in 2018. There was a lot of good promotional stuff, tours they did. I think they toured with Glass Animals and some other people, Lollapalooza, festivals, fun, fun stuff. Getting some recognition that they deserve, but, you know, 70,000 monthly listeners in 2023, nowhere near where I, I think it should be. <sighs> a lot of the songs flow into each other in the album, which is really cool. Just a sonic, subtle way. Maybe one instrument 
doing something that starts the next song or just a feeling that carries over it and then transforms into what the new song is gonna it's really cool so it's difficult to do that without being cheesy and without like foregoing the pop and embracing the progressive it's really a good mixture i just remember that moment of like what the heck that swell in loveless you ever have moments like that where it just <laughs> no idea what it is makes you take a step back it was a little bit of that but it just allowed me to remember that moment yeah and i never forget it and but i wanted to talk a little bit too about what the music means to me there was a death in the family of our great grandma and it really did ironically bring the family together for the first time realizing wow we hadn't connected as much which was great and i'm remembering this album bringing me back to that time interpersonal stuff long overdue energy and healing in that way because i listened to this a lot during that funeral time and grieving with family and so i tend to associate this album with really wanting to be there for loved ones and and the turmoil you feel but then expressing it in embrace and, and in love and giving that back. And I'm proud to say that my family is in a better place now than they were in 2018, 2017. I think it has something to do with it. It is my favorite album 2018, but in a lot of ways, there's nothing really over the top or wow about it that make you think it's like the best thing that ever came out that year i'm pulling up my list now and you have jack white's boarding house reach and cancer bats krung bin put out Contodo del mundo you had the self-titled boy genius ep <sighs> clarence clarity rosalia kurt vile you had casey musgraves with the great album you had some great gent albums it Post Malone. Remember the Post Malone beer bongs and Bentleys when everybody was going crazy about that? Charlie Puth's voice notes. And historically, maybe in America, there was a little bit of sentimentality going on. I think definitely if you think about vinyl in 2018, I think there was a lot of people going back to the analog. That's why I wanted to get a little bit sentimental. I really haven't heard that much negative about it, which makes me wonder why it hasn't crossed over more some influence who influenced this band was talk talk laughing stock if you listen to that album the first song and another song in the middle matt was talking in interviews about that fact that you know the, the obvious influence there then those similar melodies and feelings so yeah there's not a second i would take off this album it's a 10 out of 10 do you want to talk a little bit about the vinyl and some of the experiences i had if you're hunting this down because the vinyl market of this, it's been sold out for years. Color pressings are around a hundred bucks, it looks like. And I was able to buy mine directly from the band in 2019. They do this whole Raincoat Chronicles, which is really cool. Love it when artists connect you to them. It's not just interfacing with the Spotify or Apple Music stream, YouTube st algorithm stream in my case, in 2017, you can actually see what they're doing maybe on a semi-regular basis and, and get special privileges into new songs, special merch, you know, cool stuff. We appreciate the cool stuff. Being a stan. Yeah, Low Moon hasn't put out any vinyl in a while, but if you bought it from the U.S. store, you would get a cool mix. I don't know if it's eco mix, I'm most likely. You get different color pressings. Very cool colors. Got the blue. It's the blue side A, loveless, and this is it. Really cool swirl. Very intricate swirls in it. And also, have <laughs> to get pink. Side C with those beautiful yellow and pink swirls. A little bit of purple I'm noticing in there too, perhaps. Columbia 2i label. 
these cool little flex, you know, I didn't appreciate that for a while, but I really do appreciate that now. Just any little thing that makes it stand out. They also have the flex in the inserts, which I'm gonna get out now. Low Moon One. And here's the inserts. Oof, I have them in poly protective sleeve, but you can see the little flex they added. Has some intricate writing on it. Track listing. <laughs> Colored vinyl sounds amazing. And then I really was hoping after I ordered the European version, they have the European and the US, that European. I've had great experiences on before. Thought it would be great. Well, there's loads of distortion. It almost sounds like they printed it off an MP3. I don't know if they did, but it sounds like it. Terrible, not unlistenable, but definitely not anywhere near the quality of both my colored pressings. Both pressings, you say? Yeah, I, I did actually get two other colors. I happened to get orange and like a sea blue on top of the pink and regular blue here. I wonder if I can compare. Kind of tell there. Some orange reddish flex. And yellow flex, of course. Makes they're kind of fiery. Compare these blues side by side. I love the different mixes you can get mixing vinyl transparent. I would call this one more of a sea blue. And maybe, I mean, <laughs> they both are both watery blues. But I like this that it's lighter because uh, of that lyric where he talks about love for you honey's baby blue. Love a baby blue and pink. Love the contrast like ah, boy and girl masculine feminine high quality. Amazing. And of course the 45 RPM of, of Loveless. I'll just show that too. Got the clip of it there. It sounds Definitive. <laughs> I don't like to say definitive, but it's great. Sounds fantastic. So yeah, amazing colored vinyl. Love me. If I show you that oversized sleeve, just to fit it, I think it was a little too snug in a standard sleeve. So I did end up putting it in that oversized, yeah, single pocket, even though it's two discs. Just makes it a little bit easier putting it back and a little bit more space in the pocket, but I had absolutely no problems uh, getting it in without a jacket and poly outer sleeve, but of course it makes it easier. And most people, if you ask them, they're going to appreciate a gatefold opening for two discs. Yes, I am keeping my blue and pink play copies that hype stuck on the jacket. I thought it was cool to kind of put it on with the artwork. Just like that. The two hands <laughs> eclipsing the sun or whatever. That's so cool. Shout out to good album artwork. Standard black vinyl. Very similar deal. I just cut open the shrink wrap. Jackets are similar. The slight color deviation. I would say this one's more dark blue and this one's like a brighter i don't know why the deviations again you can see a little more sharpness in that one but come on we're splitting hairs especially when the vinyl and the black just doesn't sound great in comparison to colored vinyl and how about this cam shout out to this camera right here auto focusing and the Panasonic G9 Mark II, <laughs> we're in focus now, baby. And amazing close-ups of vinyl. That's what I'm talking about. So, so that's the vinyl. I thought it'd be really cool to just talk about some of my favorite lyrics again, maybe read them to you. ASMR style. Yeah, just some of the songs. I wrote a couple notes, but... Yeah, just that's why I'm going to do something special now. 
uh, in light of the vinyl shootout and talking about this music. I'm actually gonna listen to that song for the first time on 12 inch vinyl. Here we go. I've already cleaned these, so just need to play test it. I've had this in my collection, uh, I wanna say almost a year, maybe two, with the vocals, with those lyrics. That's just another thing I love about this song is the beautiful vocals and the heart put into it. What I was isn't what I want now. We can seek denial and search for miles. This is the bridge. Blessed love, the love I need. Rolling drums, the loveless bleed. This album is truly love torn, maybe torn from giving love, reassuring you know, your loved one, you'll always love them no matter what. And maybe they're going through it. Maybe you're going through it because you're just drained from loving. Maybe it's a toxic relationship in some way. Maybe the real love that's there is being slowly stripped away. And you feel that really through uh, the progressions, the way the lyrics unfold, the way the instrumental swell and fill these spaces, but they don't overpower you. They just draw you in. It's, it's really well done. Into this very long, ambient, what, seven and a half minute song? How long? 703. <laughs> On a pop song. I think there is an edit that's like three minutes or whatever. But yeah, Thorns is, and it has always been, one of my favorite songs ever but one of the best songs that really fits the flow of this album. And it, yeah, it had, does have more, it has more streams than I thought, but I don't think it did for the longest time. And I'm not sure why. I don't remember the order in which the singles were released, but I can tell you right now, Thorns finally getting the streams. It, does. it just has such good repeat value. Thorns, no one can love you the same. So he's saying, I'll always want you. I'll always want you this way. We'll learn to outgrow the thorns on the rose. Thorns on the road. If I am not victim of being in situations for too long, saying those words too, you can take that so many different directions, but you, if you really do love somebody, you make it work. Oh, it's so beautiful. But the loveless lyrics too, my favorite one, what I was isn't what I want now. We can seek denial and search for miles. Song my money. Don't marry me for my money. I've got this love for you, honey. It's baby blue. And I'll cover you if you trust me. I know it's hard for you lately to take a view. I'm tied to this. Caught wrist to wrist. Reference to that cover. Tell me what, tell me what to do. <clears throat> Tried to make you my own was so cool. It's got those toms, those rolling drums. <laughs> Loveless talking about sustained guitar. I love how they do that with sustained cuts off the right times too. I noticed that. Really spicy. Just the way they season it. And they don't do the same thing twice, even though it's consistent. And all flows really well. The song Real Love is just so open and so sad because it's talking about trying to fix it, but it's never enough and reflecting on damages done to loved ones or whatever they're going through. Perhaps maybe the damage inside that they can't wrestle out of. Ugh. And the saddest one, camouflage, just, just sad because, you know, talking about the ghosts why don't we call this what it is and i forgot the real love lyrics and now we're crawling on our bellies with an army full of ghosts of do's and don'ts and when there's something you should tell me in you i see i do i don't i do i don't the thing i noticed too in, in camouflage with the strings if you listen to just the whole progression the way it builds you can tell i love builds you can convince me to like your album if you just write cool dynamic progressions that build layers ah you got me i'm sold the strings that they do in that bridge really builds up so nicely
and in Wonderful Life, it's happy, it's dancey. Thumping synth lines and bass kicks in the sub bass is killer. That's something I didn't notice before I had this nice subwoofer is I really couldn't appreciate how well the sub kind of warms you and balances the whole tonal, uh, tonal thing going on. But the glassy guitars too in the beautiful mid-range. So much space for the reverb, never too much. It's not driving like a, in a forceful way. It's intricate and detailed and it's consistent in the vibe. Balance. It's not pushing the drive. But just drive when it needs to, and it'll be dancing and fun, like Wonderful Life. And, and All In, too, is a great closer. The first time I listened to it, like, my gut reaction was, wow, I want to listen to that again. It's over. So we're going to get into the album came out in 2018, but long before, in fact, in 2012, Mr. Matthew Lowell wrote the song Loveless. I don't know if he was writing other stuff or whatnot. Just now... More so now getting into the lore behind the band. Uh, he wrote a lot of stuff in New York City. Then he wanted to branch out, I guess, and go to L.A. And in L.A. he met Trisanta. And she became the second member. And then pretty much immediately it was Samuel Stewart. Which he has an interesting backstory because uh, his dad's the Eurythmics guy. And I guess it was a three-piece for a little bit, but the drummer then came along, joined the band after this album came out later in 2018. That's kind of how the band formed. Man, these guys did it. And they keep doing it with their other albums mentioned in some of my top year videos. Is the sky the limit? We're looking forward to seeing cool new stuff and ears on the ground for it. I'm nothing but impressed with this amazing debut. Thanks, YouTube Algorithm. Uh, thanks, Columbia Records, for not sucking and giving us the beautiful music that we want. And, uh, yeah, happy to shout it out to you and happy to you know, do what I can to bring more good music like this through the years as we get to them. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're taking it slow. We're going to keep rolling back the year's favorite albums. Picking one for each year of my life, but we'll talk about all the great music and I want to hear your favorite music too. Maybe what you're doing in this time of 2018, maybe something you love about Low Moon. This band is still going strong to this day, so we'll see you real soon. Keep on grooving your way.